Welcome to the 21st Sports 2015 season preview for the Buffalo Bills. And we're going to go over the roster and the schedule and make all the picks for the entire year. And let's start off with the roster for Buffalo. And the big question mark is going to be what they get out of their quarterback. Is they have a new quarterback this year in Tyrod Taylor. It's his first year starting in the NFL. And he'll be under center for Buffalo. They've got a lot of new faces as they've, in the offseason, picked up LaShawn McCoy through a trade for Kiki Alonso. And then they have Sammy Watkins, who had a huge year last year at receiver. Percy Harvin, another new addition. And, of course, Robert Woods is back. And then at tight end, Charles Clay, who had previously been with the uh, Dolphins. And Scott Chandler has gone to New England. So... Some new faces on offense, and I mean, a team with that many changes on offense and especially not having a consistent quarterback, that always spells problems. But let's look at the strength of the Buffalo Bills, and that is their defense. Their defense is dominant, especially up front, that front four is their defensive ends. They got Mario Williams and Jerry Hughes. And then in the middle, a defensive tackle, Kyle Williams and Marcel Darius. Of course, Darius just signed a new contract. And Marcel Darius, Kyle Williams, Mario Williams, and Jerry Hughes last year combined for 39 and a half sacks. So they get after the quarterback. And with Rex Ryan, the new head coach in Buffalo, you know defense is going to be a priority. And they've already got a strong defense. So that's going to be one of the toughest defenses in the league this year. And we look at their linebacking core. On the outside, you have Manny Lawson and Nigel Bradham. And on the inside, the middle linebacker, Preston Brown. And then the corners, we have Ronald Darby and Stefan Kilmore. And then that safety, we have Corey Graham and Aaron Williams. So the Buffalo Bills, like I said, their strength is up front in that front four. Their defense overall is a really good defense. But I don't think they're going to be able to overcompensate for the weaknesses on the offense or compensate rather <laughs> they'll be overcompensating but anyway on special teams their kicker is Dan Carpenter their punter Colton Schmidt and doing the kick returns will be Percy Harvin and punt returns Marcus Thigpen so now let's look at their regular season schedule and starting things off week 1 September for 13th Sunday at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time kickoff at home in Buffalo. They'll be hosting the Colts. Of course, these two teams used to be division rivals. They are division rivals no more ever since realignment. But they still have that natural rivalry. But I think in week one, Indianapolis goes in there and beats Buffalo. They just got too much firepower. We see in the past where, you know, uh, Andrew Luck, he threw like four interceptions against the Bills, but then he still put up enough points to beat them. And Andrew Luck, when it comes to turnovers, he's a goldfish. He doesn't remember those turnovers. He gets right back on the horse, and he goes forward. And the Buffalo, as tough as they are, and as good of a job they will probably be doing on defense to, you know, manage the points on the scoreboard coming out of the Colts' offense, and by you know getting turnovers and giving their offense chances, but the Colts' defense is good enough to shut down Buffalo's offense, and Andrew Luck will just keep going until he finally gets enough points, however many points that might be. I mean, it's not like they're going to need a lot of points to outscore Buffalo. And then in Week 2, September 20th, Sunday, 1 p.m. kickoff against the Patriots, another home game for the Bills. And this one against their division rival. And I think the Patriots are going to go in there and beat Buffalo. Again, Buffalo, as good as their defense is, their offense is a big question mark. And we just don't know, are they going to be able to put up points? And with, you know, LaShawn McCoy coming into the team, yeah, you would hope that that would spark the offense. But there's no guarantee that McCoy is going to have a good year. I know he's just two years away from being the Russian champion. But still, with his age, he's getting up there. So it's a rare thing for a quarterback to even still be in the league at his age. Of course, he still might have another couple good seasons in him, and that's you know what Buffalo's counting on. But we'll see. I don't know if it's going to be enough, being that they don't have you know strong quarterback play. Of course, maybe Tyrod Taylor's going to shock the world and you know end up 
proven everyone wrong or proven me wrong anyway, but I don't think so. So anyway, week three, September 27th, Sunday at 425 p.m. Eastern Time kickoff. They're going on the road to Miami, and I believe the Dolphins will beat them. I think the Dolphins are going to be one of the toughest teams this year overall in the AFC and especially in that division, and I think they'll beat Buffalo again. I don't see Buffalo really putting up that many points. And if you don't score, you don't win. So then week four, October 4th, 1 p.m. Eastern time in Buffalo, the Battle of New York. The New York Giants come into Buffalo. They go upstate to face the Bills. And in this one, I think that Buffalo is going to get their first win. I think the defense will shut down the Giants and be forcing turnovers from Eli. And I think that they'll be able to score enough points on the Giants' defense, which is porous. And so I think that they will win this game and get into the win column for the first time in Rex Ryan's head coaching tenure there in Buffalo and at Ralph Wilson Stadium to boot. And so week five, October 11th, Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern, they'll be going on the road to Tennessee to face the Titans, and I think they'll get their second win of the season at Tennessee. I think they could beat the Titans, shut them down, and put up enough points to win, and it could be a low-scoring battle. So then week 6, October 18th, 1 p.m., that's a Sunday game, and it's in Buffalo against the Bengals, and the Bengals will come in, and I think the Bengals will be able to beat Buffalo in Buffalo. And so then in week 7, October 25th, we have a game over in London. This one is going to be played Sunday morning. It's one of two games that they're going to be playing overseas this year. This one at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. And it will be against the Jaguars. Technically, the Jaguars are the home team, but there's really no home team in this game. They're really both road you know, teams, so it kind of works out in their favor. But I think that uh, the Jaguars actually are going to beat them. The Jaguars are going to be a lot better than people expect. Like I said, again, the issues at quarterback is really where I think Buffalo is going to run into trouble this year. I love their defense, and I would like to see them do better, but... They just don't have it at quarterback, and this is a quarterback-driven league. You don't have a quarterback, you're not going far. So week 8 is their bye week, and then that takes us to week 9, November 8th, Sunday at 1 o'clock. They'll be facing the Miami Dolphins, this one in Buffalo, and I think the Dolphins will sweep the season series against the Bills and beat them at home as they did already in Miami and then in New York. So then week 10, November 12th, we have a Thursday night game, 8.25 p.m. Eastern time, and this one is going to be at the Jets. So they'll be going a little bit southeast to the Jets to play, and I believe in this game they will be able to beat the Jets, and so I think they'll get back in the win column, their third win of the season. And then, you know, it'll be a little revenge for Rex. So then week 11, November 23rd, Monday night football, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. They're going to New England. It's uh, the second of three road games in a row, so it's a tough stretch right here. You know, if they get that win, though, against the Jets, but then going to New England, I think this is a stretch where they just lose, like, four games in a row. First, I think the Patriots are going to beat them and sweep the season series against them, especially in Foxborough. They definitely got their number. Then in Week 12, November 29th, Sunday at 1, they're going to be going to Kansas City, the third game of that three-game road stretch. And the Chiefs are tough to beat in Arrowhead. And I think that they'll be able to take care of business against Buffalo. Then in week 13, December 6, 1 o'clock Sunday, they'll be at home against the Houston Texans. And I think the Houston Texans will beat them. I think the Texans are going to be a really tough team. I think Hoyer's very underrated. And they'll be able to put up enough points to beat the Bills, who are going to struggle to get points on the scoreboard all season long. Week 14, December 13th, 1 p.m. Eastern time. They're going to be going to Philadelphia, and the Eagles are going to put up a lot of points this year. They score on offense, they score on defense, and they score on special teams. And so even if the Buffalo defense can somehow shut down that offense, they're still going to have to deal with the special teams and the defense that will put up points. And so they really are going to be in trouble in Philadelphia. But in week 15, December 20th, Sunday at 1, they'll get back in the win column once again, finally, as they'll be going to Washington for the second road game in a row. And they'll be Washington, I believe. Washington has similar problems, except that Buffalo has a much better defense. 
And then in week 16, they'll be hosting the Cowboys as they have the final two games of their season at home. First against the Cowboys, 1 o'clock game on a Sunday. And I think they, the, the Cowboys are actually going to come in there and win, even though maybe Buffalo takes this game. But it's week 17, the final game of the year, January 3rd. Well, the first game of 2016, but the final game of the 2015 season. Sunday at 1, they'll be hosting the Jets, and I think they'll sweep the season series against the Jets. Rex will get a little bit of revenge. And that will be two out of the final three games that they'll win after going on that four-game losing streak. And I think that will be enough to save you know, Rex there. Because it's always you know, a hot seat when it's Rex Ryan we're talking about. But I think that Rex Ryan is the right guy for Buffalo. But it's going to take a little time for him to get his personnel in there. And it's going to be the issue of the quarterback. And that was the issue in New York when he was there. He never really had a quarterback. And now in Buffalo, it's starting to look like the same thing. they got to figure out something. You know, but uh, I think they could beat the Jets, and so this puts them at five and eleven. I had actually said six and ten on the show when I went over everybody, but somewhere I must have miscalculated. So five and eleven, even though maybe they beat the Cowboys, and then that makes them six and ten. But that's what I'm projecting. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I know it's it doesn't seem like much six and ten, five and eleven. But, and I thought they were going to be better than that this year, but then when I like, go over the games, you know, they have a really tough schedule. I mean, they're in the toughest division as it is. And then late in the season, you know, in the second half of the schedule, it gets really tough, you know, with that Dolphins. They got that Jets game, but which is going to be emotional anyway because Rex Ryan's former team, but then Patriots, Chiefs, both on the road. Then Texans come in. Then they got to go to Philadelphia. It's a tough stretch right there. Then they get a game, you know, going to Washington, which won't be as tough. But then the Cowboys come in, you know. So it's, they got a really tough second half of the season. And if any team can outperform projection, it's Buffalo. You know, th their defense is so good. And i really like to see them do better because of that defense. But you got a huge question mark in LaShawn McCoy. If he's going to be able to perform at the level that he has performed at in the past, and also, where is Tyrod Taylor in his development? Is he actually ready? I mean, Rex Ryan believes in him, but he's going to have to show and prove before we can believe in him. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for listening. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good day and have a great weekend. And enjoy all the sports.